Hi, this is Christina Anderson. I'm the City Planner and Deputy Director for Community Planning and Economic Development here in Kalamazoo. This presentation is on the proposed zoning code and map updates that we have kicked off in the spring of 2023. This update is focused on the commercial zoning code and related standards. This means things like commercial zoning districts, both creating new districts and updating the zoning map, as well as standards for signs, lighting, landscaping, fencing, and parking. In this presentation, we'll cover three main groups of information. The first is just generally on zoning code and map updates and how we do them and why we do them. The second is going to cover what is changing with this proposed project, including both to the text of the zoning code and the map. And then as we close, we'll touch base on the outreach process and estimated timeline for review and completion of this project. Up first is why we are updating the zoning code and map. We have been slowly updating the zoning code and map here in Kalamazoo since the approval of the 2025 master plan back in the fall of 2017. The master plan sets out land use and transportation goals for the city, and the zoning code should align with those goals and help implement them. In looking at the master plan, specifically the Imagine Kalamazoo at Work section of the master plan, there are a number of actions related to updating the zoning code that staff has been following throughout the last few years and this update process. As I mentioned, zoning should be responsive to the master plan. And in Kalamazoo, we have both the 2025 master plan document as well as a series of 10 strategic vision goals and our work on the zoning code and frankly everything else that we do aligns with these two documents. Specifically, there are five strategic vision goals that this work aligns most closely with. These are good governance, complete neighborhoods, connected city, economic vitality, and environmental responsibility. And as I previously mentioned, the master plan specifically calls out the need to update our zoning code and to create standards that align land use, what happens on private property, with what is going on in our streets, because it is the marriage of those two things, what happens uh, in our buildings and the uses that occur there, with what's going on in the public places of the streets that create our inviting public places. As I mentioned, we have been slowly updating our zoning code and map here in Kalamazoo since the approval of our master plan in fall of 2017. Currently, our zoning code exists in Appendix A, which is a location within the municipal code. When we started to do the updates, we decided that we weren't going to edit the Appendix A zoning code document, that we would create a new document, which would live in Chapter 50 of the Municipal Code, and we'd take sections out of Appendix A, review them, I refer to it as running it through the wash, editing, adding, removing text, and putting it into Chapter 50. In the last few years, we have made many updates to Chapter 50 including the creation of new districts like the Live, Work, and Node districts, as well as the downtown districts. We have created and edited the Natural Features Protection Overlay District. We updated our parking standards. We have done two cannabis or marijuana updates, both for medical marijuana as well as adult use or recreational marijuana. And we have regularly reviewed and updated as necessary the zoning code based on its usage. We have kicked off this commercial focused update with an outreach process. This process has included three meetings across the city, direct mail to property owners and occupants whose property is included in the update to the zoning map. We have the draft code and an interactive map online at imaginekalamazoo.com for review and you can comment directly from that page. We have hosted a series of one-on-one -on -one property owner and occupant meetings with staff that have occurred either by Zoom, over the phone, or in person, and those can still be booked with staff through the Bookings app, information available on imaginekelmazoo.com. And we've had several presentations, informational presentations, to boards, including the Planning Commission, 
the City Commission, and the Natural Features Protection Review Board. After this first phase of engagement, staff will update the code and map based on additional research and the feedback collected, and then release a second draft for public review. The formal review process is not expected to begin until mid-summer. All zoning code and map changes are reviewed the same way. First, they are officially reviewed at a public hearing by the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission reviews the proposal and makes a recommendation, positive or negative, to the City Commission. The City Commission then takes up the issue over two different meetings. At the first meeting, they announce the potential changes and set a date for a public hearing. At the second meeting, there is a public hearing where feedback is taken and at the end, action on the proposal may also be taken. Let's now talk about what is proposed to change with this update to our zoning code and map. On the screen is the table of contents for chapter 50, zoning code. The text in blue is existing text in chapter 50 that are seeing some edits. The text in green are sections that exist in Appendix A and are being reviewed and brought into Chapter 50 with this process. Item 2, Review Bodies and Processes, exists in Appendix A for now and will be reviewed at a future date. In addition to changes to the zoning code, there are changes to other ordinances required with this project. There are four other chapters within the Municipal Code that will see updates. This includes transferring information from the Zoning Code to the Nuisance Chapter, moving information from the Animal Chapter on Backyard Chickens into the Zoning Code, and updates to the Sign Construction and Posting Signs in Public Places Chapters of the Municipal Code to best align with the updated Sign Code in the Zoning Code. There are two other ordinances that will see significant changes. These are the Downtown and Southtown Design Review Guidelines. With the new Zoning Code update, these design guidelines have become redundant and are no longer required to guide development in downtown and the areas around it. Let's go article by article in Chapter 50 Zoning Code to discuss the major proposed changes in each. First, our general requirements. In this, there are two sections that I want to highlight that are going to see changes. The first are definitions. Every zoning code has a set of definitions. The definitions in Chapter 50 are being updated because we have updated our street types based on our new street design manual. There are cannabis changes because of things that have happened at the state level. And there are new definitions since we are bringing in sections from Appendix A, such as regulations from the sign code. The second major area of change in general requirements relates to non-conforming standards. Non-conforming standards help to guide how a lot, building, or use can operate if it does not match or conform with the current zoning code standards. In other words, these are lots, buildings, or uses that were created under previous zoning code standards and no longer comply with the current standards. This is not new language in the zoning code, but language that is being brought over from Appendix A into Chapter 50. Skipping over review bodies and processes, let's now talk about zoning districts and maps. This is where the bulk of our work is for this project. This article lays out the proposed new commercial districts, which I'll talk about in detail in just a moment, and also includes bringing two other districts over from Appendix A to Chapter 50, specifically the Planned Unit Development, or PUD, district, and Institutional Campus District. The zoning districts and map includes, of course, both the zoning map, but also the street types map. Together, these two maps, zoning map and street type map, help guide the intensity, use, 
size, and scale of development throughout the city of Kalamazoo. We have always included street type mapping in our zoning code, but this change is responsive to the 2021 Street Design Manual update. We want to make sure that these documents are all working in harmony. Let's get into the details of the zoning districts that are being uh, added, removed, or changed. Right now in Kalamazoo, we have several commercial or commercial related districts. The, these base districts include CO Commercial Office, CNO Commercial Neighborhood Office, CN1, which is Commercial Neighborhood 1 and Commercial Neighborhood 2, and Commercial Mixed Use, CMU, and Residential Mixed Use, RMU. You'll see on the slide that several of the acronyms for the districts are in gray text. That means that these aren't actually mapped or used in the city, but simply exist in our zoning code. There are several overlay districts. Overlay districts are districts that sit on top of those base zoning districts and apply an additional set of standards to guide development. These overlay districts include neighborhood conservation, traditional housing development, historic preservation, and riverfront overlay districts. Only the riverfront overlay districts are mapped throughout the city. The others exist in text only. And all of these four overlay districts are recommended for removal through this process. And I'll get into a little more information in a moment on riverfront overlay. We are adding two new districts through this process. The first will be called Community Commercial 2 or CC2. The second is the Commercial Node District. So when looking at these two districts, let's talk about the Commercial Node District first. We created this district to respond to the 2025 master plan, which specifically calls out in its future land use plan, areas of commercial nodes and neighborhood nodes. We previously created zoning districts for the neighborhood node, and now we're doing the same for commercial node. Commercial nodes are typically found at or near the intersection of major corridors. They support a mix of uses, such as retail, service, and office uses, and allow residential uses above, on upper floors, or in the back of buildings. The zoning standards associated with a commercial node encourage new development to be closer to the sidewalk, recognizing that these centers serve those traveling by car on the major corridors on which they sit, but also foot, bike, and in buses. These commercial nodes serve multiple neighborhoods, and we want to make sure that the development matches with that. The second new district is Community Commercial 2. Community Commercial 2 supports small to medium scale development of commercial and mixed uses. These are typically found on major corridors where they intersect with residential streets and blocks, and I'll show you a picture of this in a couple of slides from now. CC2 supports retail service and office uses, as well as residential. CC2's zoning standards reflect the smaller size and scale of buildings and their location at the end of residential blocks, which make these areas ripe for increased walkability, bikeability, and transit. With these proposed additions and removals, here are the districts that will exist in the new zoning code if approved. There will be three commercial districts, Community Commercial or CC, which is our large scale regional shopping citywide district. Community Commercial 2, our smaller scale, uh, broadly permitted co commercial uses district and commercial node. And of course we have the Commercial Business and Technology Research District, which is located on property at the corner of Drake and Parkview known as the BTR Park. We have several mixed use districts that are already in the code, Livework 2, Livework 1, and Neighborhood Node. And we have three downtown districts that are only located in downtown, downtown 1, 2, and 3. The standards in our commercial districts differ from those in our mixed use and downtown districts. And the next few slides will start to talk about the different types of regulations associated with each. This also relates to where these districts are located throughout our city. 
The mixed use districts, Live Work 2, Live Work 1, Neighborhood Node, and our downtown districts are considered form based districts. This means that in addition to the very standard traditional zoning requirements such as height, location on a lot in relationship to the property lines, location of driveways, these standards also include information to guide the development of the street facing walls of buildings or facades, specifically to regulate things like entrance location and transparency where transparency is the ratio of windows to walls. Why do we include these regulations in these districts? These districts are located in downtown and are urban walkable corridors. We know, as I said earlier, that there is a critical marriage between our buildings and our streets in order to create inviting public places and those places that the community loves to visit and live in by making sure that those buildings are activated with windows and doors on street facing facades, we are able to help support that activity in the street. Our three commercial districts are more traditional. These focus on regulations such as location of building on a lot, height, driveway location, etc. Only when buildings are built up to the street might we have requirements in these districts that relate to entrance and windows. Let's look at the difference between some of our districts. The two images that are on the screen right now really help to differentiate between the community commercial or CC district, which again is that large regional and or citywide focused shopping district, and CC2, which is our smaller commercial district. So if you look at Stadium Drive, for example, most of the commercial lots are large, uh, although there are a few cutouts for out lots. These lots are not linked with residential blocks. There's residential that exists nearby, but it is completely separate and does not make for a lot of walking or biking between the residential and the commercial uses. In addition, just off the map to the left, is the 131 interchange and Stadium Drive is a big, fast arterial street. The image on the right is West Nedge. Now West Nedge is currently relatively fast, although the city is working to calm traffic along West Nedge Avenue. The commercial, as you can see, tends to be on smaller lots and many of the buildings are built a little closer to the street or our small strip centers. You'll notice that this commercial exists at the end of residential blocks, which makes them walkable by location, though their form may still be a bit more auto-oriented. In creating the standards, particularly for the new district, Community Commercial 2, we did some studies on lot size and building location on our streets and corridors throughout the city. What you're looking at here is a study for West Nedge, south of White and Cork. Here we were looking at lot size along West Nedge and in the light blue area, which matches with the master plan as a commercial node to understand what standards should be associated with the commercial node and the CC2 district. Here's another example of it, um, Portage Street and Cork and Portage, where there's a commercial node. On this slide, you can see how we located the proposed commercial node districts to line up with the future land use plan of the 2025 master plan. Let's now turn to the Natural Features Protection Overlay District. The Natural Features Protection Overlay District is seeing a few changes. The next couple of slides detail the location and the intent behind these changes. The first area of change is in the intent language. The red text on the slide is the language that is being proposed to be added to this section. The reason for adding this language is to tie the intent of the Natural Features Protection Overlay Standards in the Zoning Code 
with the language staff used during the creation of the natural features protection overlay in both phases one and two. The changes proposed include adding support development while protecting natural features in the city of Kalamazoo and adding the standards in this overlay district are not intended to prevent development from occurring, but to guide site development to balance growth and redevelopment with the protection of our existing natural features. Again, at the bottom, you'll see language that we use during the creation of natural features protection phase one and two. This comes from an FAQ used during the phase two process. What is the purpose of the NFP overlay? And the text reads, the purpose of the NFP overlay district is to guide development to be as protective as possible of the natural features at the site while still allowing for the zoned use of that property. The NFP overlay district does not stop development, redevelopment, or improvements to existing buildings on the property. The NFP zoning standards require things like new buildings and parking lots to be set back from lakes and rivers, allows limits on land clearing, prohibits planting problematic invasive plants, and protects steep slopes to prevent erosion. Why are we making this change to the intent language? We want to make sure that the Natural Features Protection Review Board, applicants who come before that board, and the community all are sharing the same understanding of the intent of the Natural Features Protection Overlay District. This is not a change in the intent. It's a clarification based on the founding documents of this overlay district. The second area of change in the NFP overlay district relates to wellhead protection. At the top of the screen, you'll see the existing language in gray. And at the bottom is the proposed language in red. There are two changes here. First, this section references our wellhead protection overlay standards. These standards were in the zoning code, but in 2022, public services updated the standards and moved them to their own chapter of the municipal code, chapter 39. We need to update this section to make sure that the reference is correct. It no longer should reference Appendix A, but should reference chapter 39. The second change in this use section related to natural features protection has to do with the outdoor storage of loose materials. Currently, it states that it is prohibited to do this storage within 500 feet of a water resource or wetland. Staff is proposing that this language be removed. The third area of change has to do with the additional lot coverage standards that the Natural Features Protection Overlay District placed on lots. All zoning districts, all base zoning districts, have a required maximum lot coverage. That is the amount of a lot that can be covered with buildings or pavement. The Natural Features Protection Overlay District tried to set up some additional standards to support leaving these areas undisturbed or to move them closer to existing natural features. By removing this language, we are not removing the base district requirement for lot coverage. We are simply removing these additional standards from the natural features protection overlay properties. A detailed presentation on the changes proposed to the natural features protection overlay district will be made on May 4th at the planning commission. This meeting will be streamed and recorded and you can access it if you want more information from the city's YouTube channel, as well as from imaginekalamazoo.com, the projects page for the zoning code updates. Let's talk about another overlay district. This one, the riverfront overlay. I mentioned earlier that staff is proposing to remove the nine sub areas of the riverfront overlay from the map and from the zoning code. While created with good intention to change development and redevelopment in this area pictured on the map, staff has found the riverfront overlay standards very challenging to apply and enforce. The standards have also been a challenge for property owners and applicants to do projects in these areas. 
and often has resulted in a slowed down process or stagnant development in certain locations. Let's now talk about the use regulations in the zoning code. Zoning districts have two major buckets of rules. We've already talked about those physical or dimensional standards that guide building size and scale and location on a lot. The second bu bucket are use regulations. In Kalamazoo, we list uses as permitted by right within a district, permitted with development standards within a district, which means they're permitted without needing extra approvals, but do have to follow a series of design requirements, and uses that are permitted with a special use permit only. A special use permit means that that use is appropriate for the district, but may not be appropriate for every lot within the district, so additional review is required by the Planning Commission. You will see from the use table on the right-hand side of your screen that all of our mixed-use and commercial districts are listed at the top, and our two new districts, CC2 and Commercial Node, are listed in red. In addition to adding these districts to our use table, other changes to the use section include updates to the adult use or recreational marijuana standards that are tied to changes at the state level, specifically the creation of a micro-business Class A license. Micro-businesses are a type of marijuana business that are currently allowed in the city of Kalamazoo. They operate as small-scale all-in-one facilities where they grow the product, process the product, and create items for sale that are sold on site. Micro Business Class A expands that slightly by increasing the amount of product that can be grown on site or brought in from other businesses to create the retail products sold on site. I mentioned earlier in this presentation that there were standards from the animal chapter of the municipal code related to backyard chickens, as well as the keeping of rabbits that are moving from the municipal code into the zoning code. You can today and will be able to with these updates, keep chickens and rabbits in your backyard what we have added are specific standards for where the coop and the pen area are permitted on a lot. There are four other articles in the zoning code that will see changes. The first is parking and loading standards. Currently, we operate under a minimum parking requirement, which means that every use, residential, commercial, industrial, must provide a minimum amount of parking for their own customers and employees. We are shifting with this proposed update to a maximum parking requirement, which tells businesses that they can provide their own parking as long as they do not go over a certain quantity. This is to help manage excessive parking that we find throughout the community, which can impact our stormwater and urban heat island impacts within Kalamazoo. By setting a maximum parking requirement, we are encouraging development to think about shared parking opportunities, on-street parking, and thinking about development design that supports transit, cycling, and walking. The concept of maximum parking requirements is not new. Cities across the country and the state of Michigan have shifted to this model. The landscape and screening section, which covers things like required landscaping around buildings and parking lots and fencing standards, exists currently in Appendix A and is moving over to Chapter 50 with this action. Some of the goals in making these updates are to align the standards with the Natural Features Protection Goals and the Community Sustainability Plan. In moving the standards from Appendix A, into Chapter 50, staff has looked to clarify language and streamline requirements in order to improve the application of these standards, both by staff and applicants around the city. The sign code also exists in Appendix A and is moving to Chapter 50. The language in the sign code has been clarified 
There are more illustrations to help guide use of this article. And the changes are also compliant with several Supreme Court cases that have been ruled upon since the last update in 2005. The final section being moved into Chapter 50 is the Lighting Code. There are minimal updates to this section. It is more about moving it from Appendix A, cleaning it up and clarifying the language used to improve its use by applicants and city staff. As I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, we are currently in the outreach and engagement phase for this work. The draft code and map were first released in late March of 2023. Since then, we have done a series of meetings, sent out mailers, had one-on-one -on -one meetings to help both educate our commissions and boards to the proposed changes and receive feedback from the community. After these meetings wrap up, we will be updating the draft code and map, and we will consider at that time the need for additional outreach activities to review the second draft of the code and map. At that time, we will also determine when the official approval process will begin with the Planning Commission and the City Commission. We do not anticipate that process happening before summer and no earlier than July. If you have additional questions on the proposed code and map update, please reach out to Christina Anderson, me, at andersonc at kalamazoocity.org or go to imaginekalamazoo.com slash projects slash zoning updates.